Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Rich Ward and I'm a sales engineer for Trimble. In today's video, we're going to talk about the best practices of how to splice rebar, leveraging the tools of groups, sets, and also mesh components. Now, depending on the concrete part to detail, that will determine on the best tool for you to use. With all that said, let's go ahead and get started. This is Tecla Structures 2024 Service Pack 3 in the U.S. environment. And our first example that I will demonstrate is a grade beam over supports reinforced with top and bottom longitudinal rebar. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to isolate exactly what we want to detail. And let's start off detailing in with the rebar set, the longitudinal rebar for the bottom set. And we know that this will be spliced directly over these two supports. So using the splitter tool at the very top ribbon, let's just place that splitter anywhere. And let's open up the editable attributes and it will be a custom lap of four feet. And the lap side is gonna be metal, which actually centers that splice properly. And then we can easily move the modifier in place. Now that one modifier is complete, we can easily copy that accordingly to the additional locations where we need that splitter to be. That bottom mount is complete. Let's now get the top mount. Just so we're not stepping on that bottom mount, let's just hide that bottom mount and let's add in that top mount. Using the same process, now we want to add the splice in the center of each one of these bays here. Now to identify the center, let's just use a construction line for the locations where we need the center of those laps to be. Modifiers remember the last settings that we plugged in. But that is the typical grade beam configuration with the right lap splices. It looks like I missed that. And so let's try this one more time here. Perfect. So I just showed you how to detail a typical grade beam with the proper lap locations, top and bottom. Now, another really good practice is to actually, for quality control, inquire on that cast unit and just look at the longest lengths along with the quantity. This is correct of what should be in that great beam. We are good to go at this point. Now for our second example, I will demonstrate the best practices of how to splice vertical rebar in a wall. Let's isolate the wall that we want to detail. Now this wall can represent either a cast in place wall, a precast wall, or even a CMU wall. And the detailing tool that we want to use is this mesh bar component. Now, you can see that we have splices already in there, but we can control the splicing with the uh, stock lengths that we want in that wall, along with the splicing length. Now, it's nice to have out-of-the-box stock lengths, but what if we actually need to have custom lengths in this database? Well, it's very simple to do. There are these two data files which control all that data within that component. And those are located in the system files. And all we have to do is simply browse out to that location. We want the automatic splicing tool along with mesh, uh, mesh bar splicing. We're gonna copy these out. And we're gonna drop those directly into the root of our model folder. 
For this particular component, it's the mesh bar splicing. And all we have to do is add the custom length that we would like into this data file. We want six foot legs. Those are going to be number five. Total length of each one of those sticks is going to be six feet and they're going to lap at 24 inches. Save this out. And now reload that component. Once the component is reloaded, go back into the splicing log here and you can see now our six foot lengths are right there. So let's apply we want six foot legs with a two foot splice. And so that is how you can control the splicing within that mesh bar component. In this next example, I'm gonna demonstrate on how to detail in splices using a rebar set in a wall. And once again, this wall can actually represent either cast in place, precast, or a CMU wall. We're going to use this bar face rebar tool, apply that to the face, and then we can quickly begin adding the splitter modifier. Now you can see that this first lift is seven feet and we want that to be six feet. We can open up the properties and adjust the lap lengths as such as well. We want a three foot lap, simple, simple to do, but we like a two foot lap for the number five bars. And now we can easily just copy that on up. Modifier goes up and the program tells us exactly the lengths of each one of those lifts going on up. And that is the best practice of how to splice rebar set vertically. In this final example, I'm gonna demonstrate on how to have full control over the splices within rebar groups within continuous footing. So imagine if we have thousands of feet of continuous footing within a project with different sizes of rebar. And we wanna quickly and accurately splice that rebar, we add custom splice lengths. Now within the applications and components, we have the automatic splicing tool. And this is very similar to the mesh splicing tool that we saw earlier. Now out of the box, we do have presets of certain lengths and lap lengths, but it does not contain the right uh, lap length that we need. So once again, open up the model folder and we've already copied the data file over that we need to edit this database. And that is called the Automatic Splicing Tool Manufacturer's Data File. So it's very similar. So we know that we have number five and also number four. Let's copy those out. to the very top and let's just rename this to custom sizes remain the same we do like the maximum length of 30 feet but let's say number four bar we need 18 inch splices number five we need 20 inch splices again save this out and we're going to reload that component Once the component reloads, you can see our edited data displayed right here. So now let's just select all the rebar within the project. And let's start with the number five first. Well, the number five is maximum length, 30 feet. And we have a lap length there of 20 inches. And apply. Our number five is complete. Let's load up the maximum length of number fours, which is 79 feet, eight inches. We need to splice that rebar with 30 foot lengths and an 18 inch splice. 
And this is how to have full control over rebar groups and their splices. And again, a very good practice to do at this point would be to inquire on that cast unit and just look at the maximum length, which is 30 feet, and the quantity of all that rebar within that unit. At this point, we are good to go. And this concludes our demonstration on how to splice grade beam longitudinal rebar, vertical mesh and rebar sets, and also continuous rebar groups. Thank you for watching.